Hey guys, this is Rev, and today I'll be teaching you how to play MAGA. This video covers the lore of the hero, as well as his role as a tank, his job in a team comp, his kit, and how to use it effectively, as well as character interactions and counters. There will be timestamps throughout this video that you can use to skip around for specific information. Alright, let's get started with MAGA's lore. Maga's story is quite intriguing. He was raised by his father, who led a Samoan branch of the eco-rebel group, the Deep Sea Raiders. After an accident in battle, his body was augmented by a Deep Sea Raider medic. This operation led him to get a cybernetic heart to supplement his organic one that he had damaged in the battle. He was able to win over in this battle using his new power, and later got even more augments to the point that he replaced his original heart with a cybernetic one. You can actually hear the beating of these hearts in game when MAGA Start uses his party. cardiac overdrive ability, if you pay close attention. Now, what I'm thinking is, why doesn't Sombra hack instantly kill him by stopping his hearts? Who knows, maybe he'd have a really good antivirus. Just like the sponsor of today's video- Wait, wait, wait we don't have a sponsor? Right. Later on, Maga challenged Doomfist to a fight, which ended with a draw and led Maga to earn a place in Talon's roster. In Talon, Maga met with Baptiste. The two hit it off quickly and did many jobs together. They were also both part of a Talon operation, a Monte Cristi. In the operation, Captain Cuerva assigned Talon to take out Daniel Fernandez, leader of the Playa Cartel. When they got to his safe room, they found him missing which enraged Captain Cuerva and led to a search that caused mass civilian casualties. Disgusted at what had transpired, Baptiste tried to flee in a fishing boat, but was confronted by Maga. Maga told Baptiste that there were no good people and all they could do was have fun while they had the chance. But Baptiste did not find fun in mass murder, and if Maga didn't let him go from Talon, Baptiste threatened that he would have to kill him. Maga decided to allow Baptiste to escape, telling him that now, he owed him a favor, and that he should call him when he was ready to come home. Four years later, in an operation in Haiti, Maga reunited with Baptiste, using the favor Bap owed him as well as some threats to convince him to help with the operation. In this operation, they learned that Overwatch had received a recall order, but they already had this information as former Overwatch members were already on the Talon payroll. Maga insisted that Baptiste were the one to finish the operation and kill the info leaker, but instead of killing him, he dropped the flashbang and ran away with him. Maga ran after Baptiste and chased him down, which led to a firefight that ended when Baptiste threw a prototype device into the battlefield, destroying a large portion of the dock as well as, possibly, Maga as well. However, Baptiste thought that it was way too easy and that Maga was probably still alive. And he was right, Maga lived and remained content in Talon's company, till this day. Alright, now that we're done talking about Maga's lore, we can finally get started discussing his basic stats and abilities. First of all, Maga has 500 base HP and 150 armor, for a total of 650 HP. If you don't know what armor is, it's a type of recoverable HP that reduces the damage you take by a flat 30%. However, although he has 650 base HP, he can also get more health through the use of his passive Berserker. Maga's passive ability converts 50% of all damage dealt into overhealth for up to 150 overhealth at a time or a total of 800 HP. This overhealth begins to be lost at a rate of 5 per second after 5 seconds of use but this can be stopped by landing more critical hits. And there are actually three ways that Manga can get critical hits. First, through landing headshots. Second, through using his chain gun, Cha Cha, on a burning target. Or third, through landing his overrun directly on an enemy. Now I'll be talking about Manga's two chain guns, Gunny and Cha Cha. So, his guns both have several aspects in common. For example, both chain guns have a wind-up time of 0.16 seconds, they both do 4 damage per shot, and they both shoot 18 shots per second. You can shoot both guns at the same time, and they share ammo, 
for a total of 350 ammo. It takes 2.2 seconds for his gun to reload, so make sure you're paying attention to your ammo before engaging. Both of Maga's chain guns apply movement speed penalty of 15% when you're firing them, which stacks at 30% if you're using both at the same time. Also, if you're firing both chain guns at once, the spread increases dramatically. When used, Overrun causes Maga to go into an uninterruptible sprint where he gains 50% damage mitigation. This ability has some very unique interaction with abilities that stun or cause knockback as it completely negates him after the ability fully starts at approximately 0.32 seconds. This includes Honest Leap Dart, which allows you some counterplay for the ability, and as of a few updates ago, you can no longer be hacked or EMP'd out of Overrun. You can actually have quite the fine control over the Overrun ability. If you press the ability button twice, it'll cancel the ability. But if you were to press a jump button or attack button, it would cancel into a jump. And depending on your proximity to the target, Overrun will have some different effects. If you hit an enemy directly, it'll cause a critical hit, dealing double damage for a total of 90 damage, triggering your Berserker ability, giving you 45 over health, and temporarily stunning your enemies. This can stun multiple enemies at once if they are grouped up close enough to each other. If you're further away from an enemy, they'll be knocked back and take 45 damage. If you happen to collide with an enemy, it'll do 25 damage. Although Overrun visually resembles Ryan's charge, it actually works quite differently. Firstly, Overrun's stomp acts like a real jump, which means you can hop over some small distances. Secondly, Overrun isn't stopped by walls, which includes Orisa's Fortify, which acts very similarly to a wall. Thirdly, your stomp is blocked by barriers, but your run's damage is unaffected, so if you happen to collide with an enemy, you'll still be able to damage them even through a barrier. Finally, Overrun takes priority over many other similar abilities, and I'll mention these interactions in a later section of the video. Alright, let's move on to Cardiac Overdrive. Cardiac Overdrive is an extremely powerful ability. It offers both you and your teammates 30% damage reduction and 70% overhealing for 5 seconds after casting, and activates instantly. If an ally leaves a radius of Overdrive, they will keep the effects for around 1.2 seconds. For this ability to work on an ally, it needs line of sight of them, but barriers do not matter. Cardiac Overdrive's healing does not generate ultimate charge. This is similar to many other forms of lifesteal, such as Reaper's passive, the Reaping. Cage Fight is an extremely powerful ultimate and arguably one of the strongest tank ultimates in the game if used properly. When using Cage Fight, you get unlimited ammo and any and all enemies trapped inside of Cage Fight are going to be unable to use their movement abilities. Do know that your own movement abilities will also be restricted inside of Cage Fight but your teammates will be unaffected, and they will be able to go in and out of cage fight as they wish. The way it works is that nearby enemies who are within 7 meters of you are instantly trapped into the cage. Cage fight also restricts most movement abilities, with a few exceptions. The ultimate costs 2400 ult points, which you gain 5 of every second when the game starts, and you will also gain 1 for every point of damage that you deal to enemy health, or you get 1 point for every 2 damage you do to overhealth, such as from the Berserker passive. Cage fight lasts for 8 seconds. An interesting interaction with this is that an interesting interaction for cage fight is that if placed in a moving object such as Life Weaver's pedal platform, cage fight and anything in it will follow the object. This also applies to cars, which is kind of cool. Both Manga and any enemies inside of cage fight will be unable to use movement abilities or escape, but allies will be unaffected. If Maga dies, his ult would not end early. It can only end early if Maga cancels his ult or if it is broken. It has around 1500 barrier health, which means it would take a Bastion around 4.2 seconds to break it. Alright, now we'll be moving on onto playstyles and tips. It isn't easy to be highly effective on Maga, as it requires a lot of game sense and mechanics. Maga has two main playstyles, an extremely dangerous brawl and a consistent poke. 
You'll dynamically swap between these playstyles as you play, but the general rule of thumb is that you want to start off fights by poking, and then use your abilities to engage when an enemy is low health or when you get a pick. This does not apply to when they're running a sniper comp, such as anything with Hanzo and Widow. In a composition like this, your priority should be taking space and forcing the opposing snipers into more vulnerable positions where they are less able to get kills, which you can do more effectively by brawling. Manga can be effective at just about any range. Point blank, he has some of the highest damage outputs in the game, and at range, he has extremely consistent poke damage. I recommend only shooting both chain guns at once, either when you're fighting a tank within around 10 meters max, or when you're fighting a DPS or support with a larger hitbox, from point blank. I only recommend that from these situations because the accuracy loss is gonna make you actually do less damage overall and you're also gonna be burning through twice as much ammo. The way you would use overrun in game is highly dependent on the situation. The most consistent way I've found of getting high value from overrun is to use it in hopes of negating CC. For example, in certain situations, I would poke at an Ana to make her slightly panic, and then I would use my overrun to force her to panic and use sleep. Even if her sleep were to land, it would do nothing as I would be invulnerable at the time, which allows me to punish her and kill the Ana, given that she doesn't have her E. Aside from using overrun to stop CC, you can also use it aggressively to engage, making use of the 50% damage reduction to force yourself through a tough choke. Or you can use it as a way to disengage, such as when you're being ulted by a hog. I highly recommend waiting for your cardiac overdrive to be out of cooldown before ulting, and I also highly recommend prioritizing attacking the nearest target to you when ulting, which will usually be the tank. However, if you have another opportunity to kill an enemy, such as an overextended support or DPS, they should instantly become your top priority. Do note you have unlimited ammo while ulting, so you might as well fire both weapons unless you're quite far away. This will allow you to play really aggressively, which will grant you a lot of space and value as a tank. With that, I hope you found some helpful tips for playing manga. Oh, and by the way, around 98% of my viewers are not subscribed, so if you found this video to be helpful to you, please consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate that. Yo, bro, video's not over yet. What do you mean the video's not over yet? I already spent like 15 hours editing it. Yeah, but you still haven't talked about your interactions. You know, that thing you mentioned at the beginning of the video? Alright, fine. Let me do these hero interactions quickly. Okay, now we're moving on to the section about hero interactions. Cha-Cha, Maga's right chain gun, does critical hits to characters set on fire by both Ash's Dynamite and Torbjorn's ultimate Molten Core. Chacha can also do critical hits to anything that is on fire, including heroes that are normally not able to be crit, such as Arisa during Fortify, Baptiste Immortality Field, and Torbjorn's turret. During Overrun's charge, Mago will be unaffected by a variety of abilities. This includes Sombra Hack, any and all slows and knockback, any and all stuns, including Sleep Dart, and even some ultimates, such as Sarya's Grab, Sigma's Ult, and Cage Fight. This only happens after around 0.32 seconds, which is the activation time for the ability, otherwise Mago will be affected as usual. So if the ability doesn't activate, by the time that the ultimate sets in, you will still be stuck. When interacting with Charge, Doom Punch, or Shield Bash, Mago will continue running, but the other ability will be stopped in its tracks. Cage Fight has some interesting interactions too. It works like a shield, so anything outside of the cage will be unable to harm you, while you'll be able to damage them. It doesn't cancel Reaper's Rayform if you activate it while outside, but if he tries to use it inside, it will not work, and he can't leave it once he is inside. When a stealth Sombra gets in cage fight, she will instantly exit out of stealth. Flying enemies such as Farah, Echo, and an ulting Ilari will fall instantly. 
However, if Alari uses her ult while inside of Cage Fight, she'll do a small jump that's unaffected by Maga ult, and then she will fall down as her flight is disabled. There are only a few movement abilities that work in Cage Fight, such as Ash's Shift, Junkrat's Explosives, and Sombra's TP, with the exception that Sombra's TP only works if you actually used it before Sombra was trapped. There are also only a few ways to escape the cage fight. The first one is Orisa's Fortify, the second is Life Weaver's Life Grip, and the third and arguably most powerful is Symmetra's TP, since Symmetra's TP can teleport out the entire team at once. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> Alright, we can hop into a game whenever now. I'll just uh Okay, that's it. Thank you bye.